You wish to see me? Yes. What can I do for you? Give me back my husband. Give you back your husband? Yes. You're wondering which one he is. He is a blonde man, not very tall, wears spectacles. He is a lawyer, your manager's lawyer. Alfred is his first name. Oh, I have met him, yes. I know you have. I implore you, give him back to me. You mustn't mistake my silence for embarrassment. I am at a loss because I don't quite see how I can give you back your husband when I haven't got him to give. You just admitted that you knew him. That scarcely implies that I have taken him from you. Of course I know him. He drew up my last contract. And it seems to me I have seen him once or twice since then backstage. A rather nice person. Sp nice spoken, fair haired man. Did you say he wore spectacles? Yes. I don't remember him with spectacles. Oh, he probably took them off. He wanted to look his best to you. He is in love with you. He never takes them off when I'm around. He doesn't care how he looks when I'm around. He doesn't love me. I implore you, give him back to me. If you weren't such a very foolish young woman, I should be very angry with you. Wherever did you get the idea that I have taken your husband from you? He sends you flowers all the time. That's not true. It is. It isn't. He never sent me a flower in all his life. Did he tell you he did? No, I found out at the florists. The flowers are sent to your dressing room twice a week and charged to him. That's a lie. Do you mean to say that I am lying? I mean to say that someone is lying to you. And what about this letter? Letter? He wrote it to you, and he, he wrote said... it to me? Let me see. No, I'll read it to you. My... My darling, shan't be able to call for you at the theater tonight. Urgent business. A thousand apologies, ten thousand kisses, Alfred. Oh. I found it on his desk this morning. He probably intended to send it to the theater by messenger, but he forgot it. And I opened it. You mustn't cry. Why mustn't I? You steal my husband, and I mustn't cry. Oh, I know how little this means to you, and how easy it is for you. One night, you dress like a royal princess, and the next, you undress like a Greek goddess. You blacken your eyebrows, and redden your lips, and wax your lashes, and paint your face. You have cosmetics, and bright lights to make you seem beautiful. An author's lines to make you seem witty and wise. No wonder a poor simple-minded lawyer falls in love with you. What chance have I against you in my cheap little frock, my own lips and eyebrows, my own unstudied ways? I don't know how to strut and pose and lure a man. I haven't got Mr. Shakespeare to write beautiful speeches for me. In reality, you may be more stupid than I am. But I admit that when it comes to alluring men, I am no match for you. This is a very interesting case what is yours mine what do you mean i mean that i have never received a flower or a letter or anything else from your husband tell me haven't you and your husband been getting on rather badly of late yes of course you used to be very affectionate to each other why yes and of late you have been quite cold yes of course a typical case. 
My dear, if you knew how often we actresses meet this sort of thing, it is perfectly clear that your husband has been playing a little comedy to make you jealous, to revive your interest in him. Do you really think that? Do you mean to say that such a thing has happened to you before? <laughs> Endless times! It happens to every actress who is moderately pretty and successful. It is one of the oldest expedients in the world, and we actresses are such conspicuous targets for it. There is scarcely a man connected with the theater who doesn't make use of us in that way, some time or another. Authors, composers, scene designers, lawyers, orchestra leaders, even the managers themselves. To regain a wife or sweetheart's affections, all they need to do is invent a love affair with one of us. The wife is always so ready to believe it. Usually, we don't know a thing about it. But even when it is brought to our notice, we don't mind so much. At least, we have the consolation of knowing that we are the means of making many a marriage happy, which might, of course, have ended in the divorce court. But how? How could I know? <laughs> there, dear, you mustn't apologize. You couldn't know, of course. It seems so plausible. You fancy your husband in an atmosphere of perpetual temptation, in a backstage world full of beautiful sirens without scruples or morals. One actress, you suppose, is more dangerous than a hundred ordinary women. You hate us and fear us. None understands that better than your husband, who is evidently a very cunning lawyer. And so, he plays on your fear and jealousy to regain the love you deny him. He writes a letter and leaves it behind him on the desk. Trust the lawyer never to do that unintentionally. He orders flowers for you by telephone in the morning and probably cancels the order the moment he reaches his office. By the way, hasn't he a lock of my hair? Yes, in his desk drawer. I brought it with me. <laughs> Yes, they bribe my hairdresser to steal from me. It is one. It is a wonder I have any hair left at all. <sighs> is that how he got it? I can't imagine how else. Tell me, hasn't he left any of my love letters lying around? No. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. I haven't written any. Then what made you say I that I might were... have if he had come to me frankly and said. I say, Sarah, will you do something for me? My wife and I aren't getting on so well. Would you write me a passionate love letter that I can leave lying around at home where she may find it? I should certainly have done it for him. I'd have written a letter that would have made you weep into your pillow for a fortnight. I wrote ten like that for a very eminent playwright once. But he had no luck with him. His wife was such a proper person, she returned them all to him unread. Oh, clever you are. How good. I'm neither better nor worse than any other girl in the theater, even though you do consider us such monsters. I have been a perfect fool. Well, you do look a bit silly standing there with tears in your eyes and your face flushed with happiness because you have discovered that a little blonde man with spectacles loves you after all. My dear, no man deserves to be adored as much as that. But then, it's your own affair, isn't it? Yes. Yet, I want to give you a bit of parting advice. Don't let him fool you like this again. Oh, he won't. Never fear. No matter what you may find in his pockets, letters, handkerchiefs, my photograph, no matter what flowers he sends or letters he writes or appointments he makes, don't be taken in for a second time. Well, you may be sure of that. And, uh, you won't say anything to him about my coming here, will you? Not a word. I'm angry with him for not having come to me, frankly, for permission to use my name the way he did. You are a dear, and I don't know how to thank you. Uh, you mustn't begin crying all over again. You have made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Alfred, you can come in now. She has gone.